After over two decades of war, South Sudan celebrated its independence in the summer of 2011. But the joy was short-lived. A bloody civil war broke out just two years later. The situation here in South Sudan has been quite precarious ever since the civil war broke out. Over two million people are fleeing or they've sought refuge in camps. Just three years ago, the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, SDC, wanted to assist Africa's youngest nation in developing its structures and institutions. But the agenda has now changed dramatically. What matters at this point is to provide urgently needed humanitarian assistance in a country that is threatening to slide into chaos. The SDC primarily works in three areas in South Sudan, water and sanitation, food security and protection of civilians. Ever since the conflict began, tens of thousands of people have been killed in the fighting and in ethnically motivated massacres. Here in Bentui, in the northern part of the country, the conflict is especially brutal. Looting, torture, murder and gang rapes are employed as a tactic of warfare. To escape the violence, many people fled to the vicinity of a UN mission base. From a few hundred displaced persons initially, this has now grown into a camp with a population of over 120,000 inhabitants. A wall guarded by UN peacekeepers was built around the camp to protect people from attacks by armed groups. The International Organization for Migration, IOM, is responsible for running the camp. The extremely flimsy shelters built initially have now been replaced by more stable structures. Sewage pipes will help prevent the camp from turning to slush during the rainy season. Switzerland is supporting a number of humanitarian organizations, for instance in the areas of food security and medical care. Every day new displaced people arrive at the camp, among the many unaccompanied children or parents who lost their children while fleeing. More than 11,000 children in South Sudan have gone missing since the conflict began or have been separated from their parents. When the conflict arises within the village, everyone runs on his own direction. Others, they die, but once the, children, the parents arrive in the, in the camp, they realize they are missing two, three children. Various organizations, such as the ICRC, UNICEF, and Nonviolent Peace Force, are working in South Sudan to locate missing children and reunite families. Michael Gemma William. A national database has been set up for this purpose. This woman, when we called the name, she recognized one of the children, and she said she knows the parent of this child. They're in the second block somewhere. There are over two million displaced persons, most of them without identification documents, so it's a huge challenge to reunite separated families. Despite this, about 4,000 children were returned to their families over the last two years. I am grateful that I've got my grandchildren back. When our village was attacked, we all ran in different directions. Then the children were found in Juba and brought here. I'm so happy to have them back with me. Thousands of children reported missing during the war were abducted and recruited as child soldiers. But some were also given away by their families, driven by sheer need. UNICEF aims to demobilize, disarm and reintegrate these child soldiers in their families. The STC has seconded a specialist in child protection to UNICEF. 
Reintegrating former child soldiers in schools is a huge challenge. On the one hand, the children have now returned to their families in the villages, some of which did not have schools earlier. So schools first had to be set up, partly in temporary tents. On the other hand, a large number of children, especially those who were part of an armed group for a very long time, lost valuable years of schooling. For these children, there is also a special program with intensive courses, which allows them to catch up on their lost school years as quickly as possible. Back to the refugee camp in Bentiu. When you have 120,000 people belonging to very diverse population groups living together at such close quarters with no hope for the future and no work, conflict and violence are bound to occur. The violence is often directed at the most vulnerable, namely women and children. The NGO Nonviolent Peace Force is conducting various projects in Bentiu to raise awareness of gender-based violence and prevent such violence. Today we met with the Women's Association in the POC and we talk about what conflict is, what violence is, how to mitigate conflict. And all of these things over time, we simultaneously not only build our relationship with the local community, but we're able to engage with them on a different level. We're able to actually understand what the problems are and how we can help to solve them together. <laughs> We don't just go into communities and do capacity building, but we get to know the local community and the way that we do this is by constantly meeting them, knowing their names, meeting their children, caring about, and we're also able to get to know each other on a different level. However, Nonviolent Peace Force does not just reach out to the victims of violence, it also attempts to establish a dialogue with potential perpetrators, such as the youth gangs, which are held responsible for most incidents of violence in the camp. <laughs> so always think on any level of violence, even if it starts small, try to solve it at that moment, don't let it become bigger and bigger. Here too, the main objective is to build a relationship with the groups and then discuss the issue of violence. Sometimes being killed, genocide, sometimes being raped. Together, the participants in these workshops try to identify the causes of violence and suggest solutions. You know, two years is a lot of years to be in this type of environment like this. You know, you cannot go nowhere. It's like jail, you know. We don't have jobs. So you just roaming around over here and everything until if you ain't got no way, you know, to, to go and find something, what are you going to do? You're going to be angry at the world. <coughs> we got different clans. When it was normal, we used to live far away. Now we're in the same situation. All the clan come together. You know, they don't know my tribe rules, like dignity and everything, especially about the female, about the culture. You know, uh, that's why you see a lot of fights sometimes. The people face violence in the refugee camps, but they are at an even greater risk outside the camps. Every day, women, men and children have to leave the camp for livelihood collection. This includes firewood, charcoal, fish. The reason that they have to do this is because there's not enough resources within the camp. When they would go out to the bush, they would get confronted with different armed groups and they would get attacked, sexually attacked, physically assaulted, raped. And we realized very, very quickly that this was a huge problem and one of the biggest protection concerns within the camp population at the time. Nonviolent Peace Force responded to this by accompanying women and children with unarmed patrols when outside the camp. This SDC-funded project is proving to be effective. When we started doing these patrols, we quickly saw that we provided some level of deterrence. We got feedback from the community that they felt safer. And we quickly saw a drop in uh, the level of, of uh, attacks on civilians, particularly women related to sexual violence. After this had worked successfully for several months, however, a group of women was threatened by soldiers despite the presence of the patrol. We suffered a unprovoked attack, which made us temporarily suspend the patrols, uh, take a step back and review the way we were doing these patrols. 
Until such time that conditions change and the patrols can be resumed, non-violent peace force keeps itself regularly informed about the threat scenario outside the camp. Projects and actions to protect the civilian population are more important than ever, because for now, there appears to be no end in sight to the violence and conflict in South Sudan. South Sudan is facing a very, very uncertain future. The peace agreement that was signed in 2015 has still not been implemented. In a best-case scenario, it will take a generation for the country to achieve some level of stability. One can only hope that Nyalak Zakaria's grandsons will be able to return to their village in the near future and that Africa's youngest country is able to find its way to peace.